live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. When you think of the worst special teams blunder in the history of the Colts franchise, there's probably one play that immediately comes to mind. Y'all know the one I'm talking about. You've all seen it. On October 18, 2015, maybe the worst fake punt in the history of fake punts would be executed. It's one of those plays that never gets old, and just gets more and more hysterical with each passing loop. There's a reason that this play lives in infamy, and rightfully so. However, there's two very important things with this play. Number one, it was never supposed to happen. This was a mistake, and the ball was never supposed to be snapped in the first place. Chuck Pagano's coaching and staff didn't actually think this would work. And number two, this happened in the third quarter. It definitely hurt the Colts and their chances of winning, but the play didn't decide the game. Because having said all of that, there is a special teams play in Colts history that is way worse, that nobody talks about, and that outright costs the Colts the game. It might legitimately be one of the worst coaching decisions in the history of the NFL. And with that, let's hop in the time machine and go back to the 70s. December 11, 1977. We're at Memorial Stadium for the penultimate game of the season between the Detroit Lions and the Baltimore Colts. For the Lions, this game doesn't matter. After a rough seven-game stretch entering this game where they went 2-5, they've been mathematically eliminated from postseason contention. However, for the Colts, this game has the potential to be massive. The Colts are sitting atop the AFC East with a 9-3 record, owning the tiebreaker over the Miami Dolphins. If Baltimore wins, then no matter what Miami does in their game against the Patriots, the Colts control their own destiny for the division title. The Colts have won the division in each of Ted Marcher Rota's first two seasons in charge, and a win here would put them in great position to make it 3-3. Three three. On this cold day in Baltimore with the wind chill of just 11 degrees, neither offense is able to heat up at the start. Baltimore had their chances, but they couldn't do anything with them. Case in point, the first drive of the game, where they were able to get it down to the two-yard line but get nothing after Roosevelt Leakes fumbles the ball. And the second drive of the game, when Burt Jones has a wide open Glenn Dowdy for an easy touchdown, but he just misfires. Jones would end that drive throwing an interception. And the final real drive of the half where Tony Linhart misses what should have been a chip shot 27-yard field goal. Trust me, this will not even be close to the worst special teams blunder that the Colts make. The half ends with Detroit hitting a field goal to take a 3-0 lead into the break. Not much happens offensively in the third quarter, with Baltimore scoring a field goal to tie it up at three apiece. After Detroit retakes the lead in the fourth on a 37-yard field goal, Burt Jones takes over, and he shows why he won the MVP of the entire league the year before. On third down, needing to get a big play here, hits Dowdy on a strike over the middle. On the very next play, Jones finds Lydell Mitchell wide open for a 34-yard touchdown. It took almost the entire game, but someone has finally found the end zone as the Colts lead it 10-6 with under 5 minutes left. Detroit has one last chance to get something going. While they're able to get it into Baltimore territory, they get backed up after a clipping penalty and are faced with an impossible 4th and 30 situation. Unsurprisingly, it does not work. What is surprising is that Lyle Blackwood made the interception instead of just knocking it to the ground. Now, instead of starting in Detroit territory, the Colts are starting this drive on their own 25-yard line. Either way, the Colts should have this one locked up. Detroit only has two timeouts left, and there's a minute to go in the game. Get a first down, or just run it three times and take the intentional safety, and you're going to have sole possession of first place in the division. At this point, it is fourth down. Ten seconds left. The Colts send the punt team out there. Just take the snap, run around the back of the end zone, and there is nothing that the Lions can do about it. What happens next might be one of the worst coaching decisions in the history of the NFL. Roll the tape. 11 men up for the Lions. He gets the kick away. That's all she wrote. And there's the rush. And it's blocked. Picked up by Len Thompson. Touchdown. Holy mackerel. What do you think of that? Len Thompson. Bounding through there. Blocking the kick. Picking it up himself. at the one that's going into score. Welcome to Dumb Decisions. Before I break down what happened here, this whole series is about taking an in-depth look at decisions made during games that were clearly awful from the start. This isn't something to look bad in hindsight, rather this is something to look awful almost immediately. These are moves where your gut instinct tells you right away that there is no way this could possibly work. And sure enough, your gut instinct was smarter than that of an NFL head coach. And for this one, we're taking a look at the mind of Ted Marchabrota. This is a weird one because Marchabrota is one of the better coaches that has been the subject of this series. He was named the AP Coach of the Year in 1975. He led the Colts to the postseason four times. He was the only coach that could lead an even semi-functional franchise with Robert Ursay in charge. 
he had to deal with a lot under Ursae, which I talked about in a previous video of mine that you can watch by clicking the card in the upper right corner. Basically, he knows what he's doing. And yet, he did this. He did one of the most idiotic things I've ever seen by a coach in a game. So with that being said, let's take a look at why putting the ball away up by 4 with 10 seconds left back near your own end zone is a horrible idea. As always with this, I like to take a look at things from a risk-reward standpoint. Let's look at what I would have done, and what I'm sure anyone with a brain would have done in this situation, which is run around the back of the end zone, kill the clock, and take the intentional safety. The reward is obvious. If you kill enough of the clock, that's game over. You win, you've got sole possession of first place in the AFC East, and even if you don't wind up winning the division, you put yourself in a pretty good spot to still make the postseason as a wild card. There is no greater reward with decisions than one that lets you win the game. What's the risk of running this play? Well, there is a chance that you won't be able to kill enough time, and that you'll have to punt it away on a free kick. But there are a few things with that where it's absolutely worth it to take that chance. First, even though it would be 10-8 and a field goal would win it for the Lions, that is completely irrelevant, since there wouldn't be enough time to return the punt, call a play to get into field goal range, and then kick the ball. The free kick would be the last play of the game, so the score is irrelevant. Second, Colts punter David Lee was averaging over 41 yards per punt on this day. With a regular punt, not only do you have to deal with a rush and have to risk it getting blocked, but if you do get it off, the Lions are likely fielding it somewhere near the 40 or the 50 yard line, needing to go somewhere in the ballpark of 50 to 60 yards to find the end zone. With a free kick, you don't have to worry about the punt getting blocked, and you're forcing the Lions to go somewhere between 65 to 75 yards to find the end zone. The reward of the intentional safety is that you win the game. The risk is that you still put yourselves in a better situation than what you're in right now. You might be asking yourself, though, maybe the Colts didn't trust their kickoff coverage. Maybe they were scared that the Lions would be able to take one of these free kicks to the house. Well, I did some digging. On September 24th, 1967, which was week two of that season, the Colts played the Philadelphia Eagles. From that game to the time of this game against the Lions, including the postseason, the Colts kicked the ball off 779 times. Of those 779 kickoffs over the past decade, the Colts allowed a kickoff return for a touchdown, a grand total of two times. The odds of the Colts allowing a kickoff return for a touchdown were 0.2%. So if for some hypothetical reason you can't win the game with the intentional safety, your odds of still winning it are 99.8%. As for what the Colts wound up doing, the risk reward is awful. Even if you get the punt off and everything goes according to plan, the Lions still have time to run a player or two from the scrimmage and potentially score the game winning touchdown that way. And of course, if you don't get the punt off at all, we saw exactly what happened. And what makes this even crazier is that the Colts literally had a block punt return for a touchdown earlier in the season. In a game against the Seattle Seahawks, Lee had his punt blocked by Autry Beeman, resulting in a score. He's had six punts blocked in the last six years, including one earlier in the season. Especially when you know the Lions are sending the house, why are you playing with those odds? That's just asking for failure right there. Now you might be asking yourself this, did the coaches even think of the intentional safety as an option back then? Was this one of those late interventions that only became popular in recent time, so nobody would have thought twice about it in the 70s? Absolutely not. We've seen the intentional safety before. In a 1971 game between the San Diego Chargers and the Oakland Raiders, the Raiders led by three with practically no time left in the fourth quarter. Hunter Jerry DePoister ran around the back of the end zone until time expired and took the safety to win the game. In a 1973 Monday Night Football game between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Miami Dolphins, Don Shula decided to employ this strategy to increase his team's chances of winning. This was not a novel concept. It had been done before. But don't take my word for it. Take the word of this Baltimore sports anchor immediately after the game, where he says everything that I've been saying. But the real story is why didn't they go for the safety? Give up the two points, they still would have led 10 to 8 with about 15 seconds to go, and then take the free kick with no rush, and then make them uh, come down and uh, go about 60 yards with about 10 seconds left to go. Well, it's unbelievable to me that Coach Ted Marchabroda, who's being paid to make those uh, kind of decisions, seems to have fallen into almost the same type of a slump that the team is in right now. It's an unfortunate. I guess there's just one thing left to ask. What did Ted Marchabroda himself say about this absolutely idiotic decision to not take the safety? He said, I didn't want to give them another play. Time would have run out if we had gotten the punt away. But based on all the evidence presented, that still makes no sense. Even if you don't have enough time to run out the clock all the way, all you have to do is stop a return on the free kick that was a greater distance than what the punt would have been. The logic just doesn't add up. The move made no sense. And in Ted Marjorie Rota's incredible career, this was not just easily the worst coaching decision of them all, 
but this might be the worst coaching decision in the history of the Colts franchise. So what do we learn from all this? Not taking the intentional safety when it will literally win you the game is stupid. Not trusting your kickoff coverage when the odds greatly benefit you is stupid. Putting the ball away when everyone on the opposing team is going to be coming for the block since they have nothing to lose is stupid. And if you want a textbook example of how not to close out a game, just watch this one on repeat. Because when all these elements are in play, you can't exactly be surprised when this play backfires. Talk about a dumb decision. Be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this kid down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JRGator9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.